Good afternoon. Today I'm going to go over uh, some very quick tips for uh, Plex and how to really take advantage of naming um, of uh, all the uh, features it does for your uh, media. Um, in particular, things like local extras I'll talk about a little bit. I did a, a big video that went through those before. Um, I've also gone through like how to um, do cool things with the collection uh, system that they have, how to organize those so those show up um, where you want them to, how to do dynamic collections, how to have collections only appear in the library, how to have collections only appear in the collections tab, how to, uh, you know, sort them in cool ways, all that sort of stuff. Um, but Plex has added a few things, and I've found out a few more things that have been there for a while, but just not they're like you really have to dig into the documentation to figure out um, how that they're there, how to use them. And then I came across a little um, a Reddit post uh, recently that gave me some cool info that I could not find anywhere in the documentation. So I have a Plex set up on my uh, computer here. This is just kind of a little test mini server. Um, first thing I will let you know about is uh, additions for movies. So uh, in the latter part of last year, they added the ability to specify which um, version of a uh, movie you have on your system. So basically what, uh, what you do is you just title it very specifically. You, do, uh, you title it normally, you have the name of the movie. We'll cut this out in post. We'll cut this out. So uh, the example they use on the documentation is Blade Runner, which of course has 57 different versions of it. And when you're naming your files, all you have to do, and you can do this manually. Um, you can manually do it through the um, through the um, editing windows inside of your Plex server if you're on the, the browser or like the desktop uh, app. Um, so you can do it after the fact, but you can also just add little curly braces, the word edition, and then dash, and then the name of the edition. So um, this is arbitrary. You can do it however you want. So if there is um, specific, you know, um, unique names for the editions, like Final Cut, Director's Cut, um, anything like that, you can. You can also just do fan edits of movies or stuff that you want to add there. It, it's that simple. And then what you get in Plex is multiple versions of it listed that you can go in, you can um, edit them, you can change the uh, names if you want. See right here, edition, boom. This was populated from the naming scheme I used. And you can change whatever you want. So if you want the summary to be different to kind of elaborate on um, changes in the media or um, you know circumstances that led to the release of this thing, whatever, you can even change the poster so it's got its own unique poster and all that. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got the DVD release of uh, uh, a horror classic, in my mind, Saint in Place, a soap opera from Heck, um, which uh, never really was released on DVD. And then we've got the Criterion Collection version, also um, not a real uh, version of the movie. And then just for legal sake, you know, obviously these are not actual video files. I just got some um, Linux ISO files, renamed them so that Plex thinks they're um, movies. If I click this, nothing's going to actually play there. That's just um, you know some info, behind the scenes info on how I'm uh, cutting this whole thing together. So you can go through and you can do that if you want. Um, there's not too many movies, I don't think. I mean, there's a lot of director's cuts, right? The theatrical and director's cuts that you'd probably want to have both of them on. Um, beyond that, you know, I think fan edits are getting pretty popular. So there's, there's a lot of, um, a lot of use case for this, I think. So that's how, um, editions work in Plex. You can also, um, you can also have different versions of a movie. And the difference between that and editions is editions are basically different releases. So, um, you know, the original Star Wars movies, the, um, uh, you know, edited versions with, like, the new effects and stuff, 
you know, and then maybe director's cuts or whatever there, whatever else there is, maybe a fan cut, right? And then versions uh, are basically um, the same release, but different technical specs. So that refers to the file itself. So different extensions, different um, resolutions, different codecs used. Um, maybe one is in like, you know, surround sound, one is not. Um, reasons you might want to do this is because if you use, if you access your Plex stuff outside of your home network, you might need to have um, uh, different versions that will be, uh, that will play easier on whatever device you're watching it from. Plex can do transcoding on the fly. Um, it works pretty well in my experience. Um, and I don't even have like a super powerful uh, server. Mine's running on a, you know, low to mid tier NAS. So it's not even running on like a full computer and it works fine enough. Um, but uh, you can definitely go through and optimize that if you use your media outside of your home network frequently, you might want to really do some research and see what's the best um, way to go about that and then just go through and make, um, you know, space permitting, make custom versions for um, accessing your stuff, streaming it outside of your network. Um, yeah, so moving on. Oh, yeah, there's one more thing. Um, you can also add a .nfo file inside the same directory as your movies. You will title it basically just the same, you know, name, uh, year, and then whatever arbitrary text you want afterwards. And all you have to do is put the IMDB link in there. And it's going to grab it right away. It will use that information to um, to match it. So if you have some particularly unique stuff or obscure stuff where um, it just doesn't seem to find it easily, or if you have um, maybe like some custom stuff, uh, or if like there's a, a franchise where all the stuff is named very similarly, and so you have to go in there and manually match it, this is a way that you can easily go through and tell it this is what it is. And then in addition to the NFO file for, uh, um, for movie matching, you can also put the IMDB ID in the actual um, folder or the file name if you want. Um, you know, which is fine instead of the um, separate one. Um, it kind of just depends on your use case and if you're using any like automated solutions uh, or if for, you know, you might have like your Plex library is also the library used for Kodi or a different like Jellyfin or whatever. And so there might be choices you have to make with which, um, which way is better for you. But um, yeah, so that's another way that you can you can tell it, hey, this is what this movie is, just in case you're confused, you know. Um, so movies that have very similar titles, like all uh, all uh, 14 Fast and the Furious movies that are I identically titled, all the Alien movies that are identically titled, all the Predator movies that are identically titled, um, the all the Evil Dead movies that are identically titled, um, you might need to specify uh, something beyond just the title and the year. And we're going to go into something for TV shows as well that they have that I just found out about um, a few months ago, kind of recently. But you can do a Plex Match file. So you make a plain text file with the name .plex match, and then you can put this file in um, a couple different places. You can put it in the root directory of your show, or you can put it in the root directory of a season. So. What this does is, this is like a pretty advanced way to guide um, Plex into, um, you know, matching your stuff um, correctly. Similarly, you have a Plex, Plex match file, and it's basically a series of key value pairs. We're going to have, um, like for this, I just have IMDB, ID, colon, space, and then the... Uh, you know, little ID for a TV show. For IMDb, you don't need the TT at the front, but you can use it 
um, for, you know, consistency's sake, if you want. And there are a number of ways that you can, uh, you can do this. You can do some pretty advanced stuff with this. So I think it really is going to come into play if you've got something that's got a really weird, um, like, numbering for specials, or there are some, some shows where it was released on DVD in a certain order, but aired in a different order, and certain databases that you might be using will only have one of those, or you can't really, like, tell Plex to use this numbering system, so I guess, yeah, there are, there are a lot of, um, ways that this could be used, and you can even do regex matching, so you can do, um, like regex stuff, you can do um, offsettings, you know, if you've got like certain episodes, like let's say, for example, they use uh, in the specials, those clips one through three that are actually numbered five through eight on the TVDB. Um, so you can go through and you can have it um, do pattern matching and replacements so that it can correctly match your stuff. Like there are certain things where it's just a nightmare to get it to match correctly for your stuff. Um, especially like cartoons. There'll be cartoons where it's like there was a 30 minute block that they aired, you know, that but it's like two, two stories, you know? And so those are separately, but you can only rip them easily from your DVDs or whatever, um, you know, as full files. But so there's, there's a lot of weird cases with, um, with getting certain TV shows to match correctly, you know. And so this would be a way that you can kind of preserve the uh, naming conventions and the the way that it needs to be matched correctly, um, you know, across installs um, during backups, um, you know, like not Plex database backups, but like backing up your whole library like to a new drive or something like that. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, like, I haven't seen it, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's, like, PlexMatch, um, like, pre-built PlexMatch files for certain, um, you know, certain shows. There just might be. Yeah, so just a couple really, really quick, easy tips. Um, if you have a big Plex library, if you, um, find yourself, uh, trolling through, uh, Internet Archive, downloading gigabytes and gigabytes of old uh, VHS releases, you know, that, you know, four people still alive have ever seen, and you want a, an easy way that you can kind of, like, go through at your own pace, do a Plex match file, toss an IMDb thing in there, and then just let it scan it and not have to worry about after the fact going through and naming them through the Plex interface, this is a great, um, great thing for you. Um, I'm, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just speaking from my own experience of having to go through and use the interface to match all this stuff because the files were correctly named, but it still can't figure out what the heck they are. Uh, you know, this is, these are a couple ways that you can, <laughs> you can, uh, alleviate that potential stress. Also on Reddit, um, I was going around looking for some stuff and I found... Um, John Kidd Jr. on the Plex subreddit, um, he has put up a Plex match file generator. So, um, it's a command line tool available for Windows and Linux that will let you, um, you point it at your Plex server and it will go through and it will generate a Plex match file for every directory in there. Um, I don't necessarily know. I haven't used it yet, but its last update was three months ago. So it's, um, I don't imagine it's out of date because Plex doesn't move, you know, too quickly. Um, so that's very cool. It's something I will probably run on my main server and see the results on. I don't know if it goes through season by season for your shows or if it's just for the prime uh you know the primary root directory of the shows um nothing it doesn't seem immediately clear but um i think that's uh i think that seems like a great tool and i think getting in the habit of when you add something new to um 
set up the directory yourself with a Plex match thing, with, um, uh, you know, whatever artwork and stuff you want locally, and then toss the whole directory into your thing. Um, I think that is probably my preferred approach. Um, get everything sort of customized, set up how I want it, toss it in there. Um, so that's something I'll have linked down below as well. You can take a look at it. There's also, uh, I'll put a bunch of Plex links in there because there's um, a bunch of different subreddits for specific aspects of Plex that I think um, people should know about because it's very, a uh, lot of useful stuff in there if you really like to customize your experience. So just thought I'd throw that in there as a cool tool you can use. Um yeah, there you go. Um, I did a pretty uh, in-depth thing about collections and how to um, use those to customize your um, library for both TV and video. Um, I'll put a little uh, little thingy, little link, clickable thingy in here and in the description. Um, I have put together a collection of uh, 150 or so plus um, uh, artwork pack that you can use for your Plex collections. Um, they're sized and everything specifically for those. Um, you can probably use them for other uh, home media uses as well. Um, I'll put a link down at the bottom there for that. Um, it's free. It will ask you for, it's you know free, pay what you want. It will ask you for an email. You do not need to put a valid email to get access to download it. If you do, then potentially in the future when I add a bunch more, you might get an email letting you know that there's an update to it, but that's it. Grab it if you need it. If you have uh, requests, I'll see if I can um, uh, take care of that. I've got um, I've got a list of stuff that people have requested for in the different styles that are on there, and I'm I'm still gonna slowly getting around to them, and I, I do have an update that I want to add to that um, to kind of enhance your Plex experience. All right, okay. Um, Happy watching. Well, I don't know. I don't know.